Mass Bound Cup from Kaiser Electronics. Today we're taking a look at this Servo Max Analyzer Series 1400. It is a CO2 analyzer percent wise 0 to 20%. I'm not quite sure about the range and or what this instrument really do, but what we can tell from the look of it that this was not treated nice at the scrapyard. It took a serious beating, but it seems that most of the electronics is uh, intact, so at least we can take a look at that. Now here at the back we can see it's a 240 volt unit, made in England, has a SK5 and PL5 connections, probably because this can sit in a chain of a analyzer series of uh, apparatuses. We can see it's flammable samples must not be used, so this clearly is not an EX rated device. It can take 110 to 240 volt AC at 48 to 62 hertz, so it is a internationalized unit. It only uh, uses 30 volt amps, so that's a roughly 30 watt. So we can clearly say this does not contain anything else than some analyzing logics. There is no heating element or Peltier freezer or something like that. There was this uh, mystery bag at the front, which makes me think that this is some kind of spare part bag. Maybe this unit was actually never used, but just thrown out directly from the shelf. We'll see, it says here, Warning, read handbook supplied with the instrument. Two, check voltage setting. Three, keep the contents of this bag. Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder what the contents of this bag really is. See, it's a little brittle. Oops. So that seems to just be a serial plug. Yep, just a spare plug so you can uh, make your own uh, cable. Yeah, be sure to keep that. So let's get it torn down. Whoa, genuinely surprised. Look at that. That's way more awesome than I had imagined. Look at that CO2 pump with some kind of analog sensor sitting here. That has to be some kind of pump and heating element over in this large uh, brass bracket. Seems to be some kind of uh, insulating material or magnet between it. And just the boards. Look at the quality of this. Small holders on the flat band uh, cable connectors. I love the colored uh, selector switch here. Even have some internal switches and seems to have some ceramic IC packages as well. Wow, this is really uh, much better than expected. Let's see what we have here. Date the 20th of June, 90. This is 30 years old, nice. Fits much better to the electronics. Up here we have a uh, Motorola MC6802 with a 4 MHz crystal next to it. And this is the ceramic packages that I was talking about. But look at that board layout, that's awesome. I almost feel like we should just put power to this. Because actually it does not seem to have any smashed up electronics. I mean, okay, the front panel here is uh, sitting loose, but nothing seems to be broken. What we have over here seems to be power supply. Yep, all power supply. Well, I say, let's just try to put uh, power on this, see what happens. So, here goes. Okay, some fan is running. Have a green LED on for power there. Okay, blinks at the front for alarm. But here we can see it says uh, minus 3.6%. We have the alarm status blinking here and we have the flow missing and this was the range selection. Selection. See what do we have on the other side here with the microcontroller. Have LED Two, three, and four turned on. I wonder what that switch does. Maybe it's a reset switch. Hmm. 
makes a little squeaky sound from the electronics, but uh, other than that, no change in the front panel or any LEDs. That took a good while to get into the whole heart of the unit, the CO2 analyzer itself, or at least the trap part with some kind of pump and engine and maybe some kind of isolated heater. Also has a little power supply, which is uh, welded in place, so uh, that's not coming out easily. So let's see how much more I can get apart and we will take a closer look at this. I usually say that you can say by an instrument or a piece of equipment that how hard it is to take apart is the amount of energy and engineering that went into building it as compact and complex as possible. Now the same goes for this sensor type. Incredible small details have put into this to have this being a completely sealed unit. Let's start with the sensor itself, which seems to be a pretty simple sensor type probably uh, some analog uh, IR infrared sensor. Has a little gas port uh, along with the three pin connector. Now the gas port connects via this uh, black hose up to the back of the, you know what you call that, the uh, reference unit. Uh, this was a separately sealed compartment between these two discs. Has a little window with some kind of uh, reflective material in that I cannot even see the sun through. So that's uh, probably very blocking. Perhaps it's uh, some kind of a laser wavelength um, and not just uh, infrared. Now it has uh, several gaskets around here. Has a small uh, motor with the two uh, other mirrors or reflectors sitting there. You can actually see some nice uh, diffraction of the fluorescent light bulb. Uh, now, um, on the back side, there are several uh, instruments. First, there is a uh, temperature sensor, which sits underneath a 47 ohm power resistor, which suggests that this was heated up to some reference point. And there is a port for perhaps pulling vacuum or some inert gas that was inside this part of the detector and also the, or the transmitter and the detector. As here we have the other end of the gas port. The small black one here is a DC motor which drives the rotating mirror on the inside. Then we have some, um, yeah, what seems like a diode connected over to the board here and the other high current connection connected directly to the brass plate. And over here we have either a laser diode or infrared diode, some kind of light source. Now uh, the chamber in the middle, we can see we have the two gas ports for the uh, CO2 gas going through. This is uh, completely sealed. There is uh, a uh, piece of glass on each side, so it's a separated ch chamber that the light can go through to be analyzed at the receiving end. Extremely high quality welds and probably also a extremely costly part to manufacture once it was new. The inside of the sensor itself has a small, a very fitting housing along with actually extra gaskets. We can see the gas port sitting in here to keep uh, this sensor part at the same atmospheric pressure or same gas or vacuum for that matter as uh, the transmitting part. 
and we can see it's just some tantalum capacitors, resistors, and perhaps transistors, MPS A14. Well, that is a high voltage transistor, so this could risk to be some kind of a high voltage part. Uh, see, we have a part number here, PLT522. So let's just check out the data sheet on that. The power supply is kind of peculiar because it seems to be like one, two, three, four, perhaps five separate power supplies. Over here we have a high current supply. We can see that from the large gauge of the output choke here. And also the flat band was what connected to the back of the sensor. We can see it as CA3524. 14, 31, 30, 35, 24 uh, controller ICs, and we also have a 7805, a 5 volt regulator sitting here with a little heatsink. The um, MOSFETs driving the large um, output current power supply here is RFP2N10 MOSFETs. And if we can check out the, it's a 10 volt electrolytic capacitor that we have here. And that is probably a high voltage, no, 35 volt. So we have a step down transformer, which was the one we pulled out earlier. So we can just switch these around. Pretty basic, um, just a normal toroidal transformer with a little uh, input protection and filtering. Nice uh, organic PCB design. No markings except some uh, obscure part number. But uh, that can be reused. Just have to measure it out. Actually it sits on a nice PCB so can be reused to as the whole unit here. Now the main CPU board with the MC6802 CPU on it running at 4 megahertz. Let's see, do we have anything worth noticing here? This is probably a interface, interface driver chip. We have a few uh, very nice uh, gold-plated test points here. Nice uh, through-hole uh, big sockets which you can actually insert this little gold bridge in. This is uh, perhaps extremely much higher quality than the instrument appears to be. Certainly, uh, I hope this was expensive because it seems to be expensively built. Over here we have the uh, EEPROMs with the programs on. And quite, quite fun that it has uh, plastic packages, the uh, really uh, weird brown plastic packages along with ceramic packages. So this is really built in between ages of different technologies. And still don't know what that switch does, but let's just say it's a reset switch. Moving on to the front panel, we have four trimmer parts for different alarm uh, limits. Along with the switch one and switch two here, probably some uh, yeah, settings regarding what kind of um, range it's me measuring in. And I noticed that these uh, brown uh, sockets here, that's actually for the uh, LEDs, which are just mounted through the front of the plate here. That's uh, kind of funny. Good old school DPM 600 display. Probably has its own uh, drivers. Yeah. Along with some uh, up to coupling. Also, other than that, not much to note about it, except that, again, they use a million different resistors and parts. And thinking about it, I think this could be a form of copyright protection or what you can call uh, copyright through obscurity or security through obscurity that you simply make your product so hard to replicate that they have no chance in a thousand years to source all these different kind of ICs and different packages and they probably found some IC that just was so special when used like this that Nobody in their right mind would try to reverse engineer this and actually make it work. You could even risk to find some parts of circuits here that does absolutely nothing. That there's no functional part in it, but it's just complex. But without it, it won't work because it's just some kind of loop 
through it or some internal resistance that you use for a check, you never know. From the transmitting end of the sensor, there was uh, quite a few ports in it. And there were a few uh, what I would call uh, mystery components. Because I cannot quite seem to figure out what they did. Now first we have the port here, which just has a filter, which uh, would connect to the receiving sensor. Then there was this I thought was a diode. That is mounted here. And that is actually corresponds to be just over the um, mirrors, the rotating mirror, while the, the one I'm sitting over here, which I thought was a diode or laser diode, is uh, far off, almost out on the perimeter of the desk. Inside this was some kind of, um, yeah, what do you call that? Small broken white glass thing with a thin wire going around it, looks like a coil. I'm not quite sure if it's some kind of heater or if you send some kind of electric current through this and this was a crystal sending out some light. So please do comment if you know what uh, this component is because it has no markings. Now the um, other thing here that I thought was a uh, yeah the laser diode, that's actually a magnet. So perhaps it's a uh, electromagnet. So um, I'm not quite sure, maybe that's a some kind of brake or maybe some kind of sensor. Ah, wait, there is actually a little nut there, a little uh, lock nut. So I guess this could uh, break the disc in a certain position. Okay, that's interesting. But please do comment if you know much more about this instrument than I did. So I really hope you enjoyed this teardown. It was really a lot more interesting than I first thought it would be. I yeah, just thought it would be some kind of uh, passing something through light. At least uh, most gas analyzers tend to, uh, to be a, some kind of uh, diffraction measurement. But it uh, turned out much prettier and much more interesting than I first thought. So thank you for watching and until next time. See ya.